Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I wanted to talk to you today about how gluten affects the nervous system. Specifically, for over 60 years, there have been many, many studies looking at how gluten is associated with a very serious neurological disease, schizophrenia. And uh, there were some very interesting observations epidemiologically oh, let me try that word again, epidemiological, there's a mouthful, uh, studies during World War II. So what they found was that during World, World War II, um, across five different countries, uh, there was less wheat available during the war. And at that time, the number of people entering hospital for uh, schizophrenia disorders uh, decreased very dramatically. After the war, when wheat was again made available, those numbers popped right back up. So it was an interesting correlation, and it wasn't just seen in one country. They looked at five different countries during World War II. Also, uh, there are places in the world like uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, there is a place in the Solomon Islands where um, the natives just don't eat any gluten. It's just not available, it's not part of their diet. And in those countries, schizophrenia is, is very, very rare. Uh, yet, they found that in areas such as that, when they become westernized and gluten becomes part of their diet, that the, the schizophrenia incidence quickly pops up to that seen in European uh, countries. So, some interesting correlations there. How is it that gluten affects the nervous system? How does that happen? Um, first of all, we talk about gliadin a lot, or gluten, and that's just one of 23,000 different proteins in wheat. So wheat is a very huge uh, molecule when it comes to its protein structure. So uh, there's likely many different proteins uh, affecting us, but we do know that uh, wheat is very, very difficult to digest, that as humans we are unable to fully digest it. The other thing that happens when you are sensitive to gluten, whether it's celiac disease or gluten sensitivity, uh, you tend to make um, something called zonulin, which creates a leaky gut. So a leaky gut means that things are partially digested and then they leave the small intestine getting out into the bloodstream. So what happens uh, is that A, it's only partially digested, the protein, Two, it leaves the gut because of the leakiness, and now it gets out into the bloodstream. So when it's out into the bloodstream, we know that the immune system can make what's called an antibody against the protein, and through a process known as molecular mimicry, meaning something's alike to something else, uh, the body also makes antibodies against part of the nervous system. So it's a confusion because that gluten or that protein structure from the uh, wheat molecule looks a lot like other structures of the body. And this happens in the nervous system to, to a very great degree. There are over 200 um, different problems associated with gluten. Uh, 20 modes of toxicity, and the mode of toxicity that is most common has to do with the nervous system. So it's not at all unusual, and that's the point I wanted to make, for gluten to create neurological problems. There's schizophrenia, there's ataxia, meaning your, your, your balance is not good, um, you, you feel like you're drunk almost, uh, seizures, autism, hold on, what am I forgetting? Um, uh, well, neurobehavioral disorders, so it's changing your behavior, uh, as in schizophrenia, and then neuropathy, which basically means a disease of the nerve. So that's the grouping associated uh, with gluten. Now, antibodies, those antibodies, once again, which makes, means your immune system doesn't like gluten and is making something to attack it, that is found in 27% of our general population. Yet in people with neurological problems that the cause is unknown, 57% of them have these antibodies to gluten. So it really is a high, much higher preponderance, uh, more than double in those with neurological problems. So um, the question is, is gluten causing every mental health problem across the planet? No, we're not saying that, but it, it's so predominant and it so much has that mechanism that it's certainly worthwhile 
A, getting tested if you can for both celiac disease and gluten sensitivity, and B, if you're unable to get tested or even if that test comes back negative, and that's a big one to make note of because the test isn't perfect, it's worth doing a 30-day elimination diet of gluten and see how you feel, see how you feel physically, see how you feel mentally and emotionally, and if you notice a change, that is a positive test right there. And perhaps a great idea to eliminate gluten from your diet. So um, I hope this was helpful for you and informative. Please share the information with others. Many are suffering who don't need to, and that's why I'm here to share this information. So please send me your questions, your comments. I do love to hear from you. And until next time, I wish you very good health.